How's it going guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and welcome back to SDC, the place where I try my best to keep you guys up to date with everything that's going on in the NBA. But that being said, let's not waste too much time. Let's just get into talking about everything that is going on in the NBA. But first, I do have to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, SeatGeek. And SeatGeek is the world's best ticket purchasing app that there is. As SeatGeek is the best, most hassle-free way to purchase tickets to NBA games or any other live event in general and it gets even better because you can get a live view from the seats before you buy the tickets and on top of that you also get an additional $20 off when you use a promo code SDC on your first order. This app is really a must have for any NBA fans out there like trust me you gotta get it I'll have the links down in the description box below. But now with that out the way let's get on to today's video. So the Dallas Mavericks from the sound of things may not be entirely convinced that Dennis Smith Jr is their starting point guard of the future anymore. As according to reports that we just got out, the Dallas Mavericks are already looking into the trade interest and the trade value that Dennis Smith Jr. has. Mark Stein mentions expectations among executives around the league that Dennis Smith Jr. will eventually be moved. Mavs tell Stein that they aren't shopping Smith, but that's semantics. Executives from other teams tell me that the Mavericks are at least gauging the market for the 2017 lottery pick. Now, this is news that I definitely did not expect to see pop up onto my timeline, at least anytime soon, as Dennis Smith Jr. is just in his second year in the league, and the guy did have a very promising rookie year. So I was kind of shocked that Dallas is even considering trading him right now. But then again, I think this could have a lot less to do with Dennis Smith Jr. and his potential as a player, as opposed to Luka Doncic and the fit of Dennis Smith Jr. next to Luka Doncic long term. As maybe the Dallas Mavericks don't see a future in which the two of them will be able to coexist on the same team. Since Luka Doncic has already proven that he was as good as advertised when he was in the Euro League, that all the hype around him was well warranted when it was coming into the NBA. That being said, he is a forward who can play the point guard position, who can make plays for others and set the team up. He is going to be the Dallas Mavericks primary playmaker for many years to come. And then of course, on the other hand, you have Dennis Smith Jr., a point guard who really enjoys having the ball in his hands and making plays for himself and for others. And you're going to have two guys like that on the court at the same time. It could cause a potential clash where they might not be able to coexist with each other so easily and maybe the Dallas Mavericks feel like they should be going out and getting another point guard and other players who can play more off the ball alongside Luka Doncic but that's just one possible theory out of the many possible theories out there and once again I'm not even sure why I'm reading this because I don't understand why the Dallas Mavericks would be wanting to trade Dennis Smith Jr. so early. Even if they do feel like long term he and Luka Doncic won't be able to coexist with each other, I just feel like it's still way too early for anyone to tell that. They've played together for like 20 some odd games so far into the season. So for Dallas to jump to the conclusion that is not going to work long term, so let's start looking for trade partners for Dennis Smith Jr. right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's way too early to give up on this experiment. So last night, Christmas Day, LeBron James suffered a groin injury in the Lakers blow win against the Golden State Warriors. And in case you haven't seen it yet, this is what happened in the third quarter. On this play, watch James reaching for the ball. You can see him grimace right there and feel that he hurt something. And then when he came over. So it's an injury, but it's not like it's an injury that forced LeBron James to go to the ground and he was writhing in pain or anything like that. It's not the most severe of injuries. Granted, he did say when he was coming off the court that he heard a pop or felt a pop. And after that, he never returned to the game, of course. So it is a groin injury, but we don't yet know how severe of an injury that it is. And we don't know how much time LeBron James is expected to miss. And even though any injuries suck and you hate to see a player, especially like LeBron James, go down with an injury, we have to be thankful that it's not serious. Because if it was a serious season ending injury, that would be catastrophic for the entire NBA and I know Los Angeles Lakers fans especially would just be heartbroken by it but that being said I do want to say that I think this LeBron James injury might turn out to be a blessing in disguise for the Los Angeles Lakers since it means that the Lakers will now be forced to play a handful of games without LeBron James meaning that other players on the Los Angeles Lakers will be tested and forced to step up in LeBron's absence Kyle Kuzma, Alonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram all of those guys are really going to have to step up to the plate and prove and learn how to win 
without LeBron James. And if that happens, if this Los Angeles Lakers team can learn how to win without LeBron, it'll give them a huge confidence boost, which will make them only that much better when LeBron James does actually return. Because one of the negative effects of having LeBron James on your team is that it becomes quite easy for a lot of the other players on the roster, pretty much every other player on the roster, to become very reliant upon LeBron James. They expect him to do everything for them, to the point where if LeBron James ever does have to leave the game, the team no longer knows how to function and they don't know what they're doing. It's like a chicken running around with his head cut off. So for the Los Angeles Lakers to be going through this right now, it's a great thing because they haven't been so exposed to LeBron James where it becomes hard for them to learn how to win without him. He's only been there for like 30 something games so they shouldn't be completely reliant on him just yet meaning that they'll still be able to learn how to win without him and that's also kind of what Luke Wallen said after the game as he said this is uncharted territory obviously with this group but this is what we've been talking about this is what we try to plan for not that LeBron James gets hurt but being able to play and win and compete when he's not on the floor and all that comes to my mind is a couple of years ago when the Cleveland Cavaliers were taking on the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals this is back when Kyrie Irving even was still a part of the Cleveland Cavaliers and you remember in that series that every time LeBron James had to come out of the game even just for a couple of minutes to catch his wind at that time when LeBron James first came out it would be a really close game the Cavs might have the lead they're down by a couple of points it's nothing serious it's a game that looks like it could go down to the wire but then LeBron James comes out and immediately after two minutes the Cavaliers might have went from down two points to down 15 to 20 points and that's just because they had no idea how to function without LeBron James. With LeBron James in the game, they couldn't keep up with the Golden State Warriors. And that's exactly what the Los Angeles Lakers have to try and avoid. They have to be just as good of a team with LeBron off the court as they are with him on the court. So Kevin Durant talked about his free agency plans yet again recently as he continues to be very vocal, open, and maybe even honest about what he plans to do this July when he hits free agency. And what actually could be the last major contract of Kevin Durant's career, considering that he has said before that he plans on retiring when he's around 35 years old, and he's 30 right now, and if he plans to sign a long-term contract for the most amount of money he can make, that means that this very well could be Kevin Durant's last major contract in the NBA. So he's taking it very seriously and he's been very open about what it is that he wants. And yesterday, that means that he said the team shouldn't even worry about trying to recruit him anymore. Nobody can recruit me no more. I want to dictate the environment that I want to be in. Doing extra stuff just for me, like nah, I just want to see if you're a real person. If you're going to hold people accountable every day, are we all going to come to work and enjoy basketball every day? That's exactly what I am getting here. And once again, Durant also made it clear that he does want as much money as he can possibly get this summer too. And from the sound of all of this from what Kevin Durant just said, I don't think anyone should be counting out the very real possibility, actually I'd say the very high possibility right now, that he does re-sign with the Golden State Warriors. Now we all expect Kevin Durant to test the waters of free agency this summer. You hear the New York Knicks toss around, of course, the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm sure he'll give thought to joining a lot of other different teams but from the sound of things it really sounds like Kevin Durant is leaning towards staying with the Golden State Warriors with him at the end of his quote saying that he's already getting a lot of things that he wants out of an organization with the Golden State Warriors with guys showing up loving basketball and holding each other accountable and not to mention that the Golden State Warriors will be able to pay Kevin Durant more than any other NBA team this year they'll be able to offer him a five year super max deal while every other team will only be able to offer Kevin Durant up to four years at a super max deal and if he wants to make the most money possible then Golden State is his only option but once again i do expect him to give thought to other teams but in order for him to leave the golden state warriors and leave a significant amount of money on the table he'd really 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 have to love the idea of playing wherever it is that he leaves the golden state warriors for and i don't know if there's a franchise out there that can entice kevin durant enough to make him leave Golden State. And lastly, voting for the NBA All-Star Game has officially begun, ladies and gentlemen, where you can vote for up to 10 players a day to be the starters for the NBA All-Star Game in February. And I guess I'll give you guys a look at who I voted for for the first time today. From the Western Conference, of course, they got LeBron James, Paul George, James Harden, Anthony Davis, and Stephen Curry. And then from the Eastern Conference, I got Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, Victor Oladipo, 
and Kyrie Irving. I was really tempted to put Kemba Walker in there, but I still had to go with Kyrie Irving. As for the notable people that I chose, I think the most notable one is Paul George, and the man really deserves it. I know Kevin Durant most likely is going to start over Paul George, obviously, because of the fan base for Kevin Durant is a lot greater than the fan base for Paul George. But if I'm just being real with you guys here, Paul George has been on another level so far this year, and I think the man definitely deserves to start, even though he won't. And my light just went out at the very end. So I guess that's going to do it for this video. What a coincidence. Anyways, let me know who you guys are going to be voting for the All-Star Game down in the comment section below. But thank you so much for watching. Here's a look at the updated standings, of course. And if you enjoyed the video, then why not go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA because I make videos every Monday through Friday. Thank you once again for watching, though, guys. You already know that you are the real MVPs, but... Until tomorrow, I'm out of here. Peace!